Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 14th of July 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Cairo consensus deals with option A population dynamics, family planning and reproductive health, option B exploration and use of outer space, option C navigational rights and freedoms, option D special use airspace. Before we discuss the answer, let us have a look at the context. The Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister has launched the state's population policy for the upcoming decade, that is 2021 to 2030. And there's a lot of debate going on about whether or not such a population policy is necessary for India, its merits, demerits, etc. This editorial in the Hindu newspaper today also critically analyzes the idea of incentives and penalties for population control and this article has a mention of the Cairo consensus. Let us now go back to the question and discuss the answer. The year was 1994 and the program of action of the International Conference on Population and Development was adopted. Colloquially, this document came to be known as the Cairo Consensus. This document, that is the Cairo Consensus, served as a philosophical guide for international efforts towards population dynamics, family planning and reproductive health. It expected the governments world over to take pointers while dealing with the issue of poverty and high fertility. So what did the Cairo Consensus suggest? It suggested promotion of reproductive rights, empowering women, promotion of universal education, maternal and infant health to tackle the population related issues. So the right answer to this question would be option A, Cairo consensus deals with population dynamics, family planning and reproductive health. Moving on to question number two. Puli Chintala project has been a source of interstate water dispute between which of these states? Option A. Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Option B. Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. Option C. Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Option D. Odisha and Chhattisgarh. Why this question? The Hindu newspaper has a mention of the Puli Chintala project. The Puli Chintala project has been stopped owing to disputes between two states. Which two states? To answer this, let us go back to the question. The answer to this question is option C, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Andhra Pradesh and Telangana have disagreements over the sharing of Krishna River water. And that is why Krishna River Management Board was set up as an autonomous body after the bifurcation of the state of Andhra Pradesh to manage and regulate the waters in the Krishna River Basin. And Puli Chintala is one such multi-purpose project which has become a source of dispute between Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. And it is a crucial irrigation facility for farmers of four coastal districts of West Godavari, Krishna, Guntur and Prakasam districts. And Andhra Pradesh alleges that Telangana has been drawing Krishna water from Puli Chintala without approvals from the Krishna River Management Board. So the right answer would be option C. Here's a task for today. Make a list of all the interstate river disputes that you've come across so far and let us know in the comment section below. This list will help you for your prelims as well as mains as these interstate river water disputes pose a huge challenge to federal water governance in India. Now let us move on to question number 3. Which of the given statements is or are incorrect? India has set a target of installing 175 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2022. India's renewable energy target includes installing 100 gigawatts of solar power. India's largest floating solar project has been commissioned at Chennai. Let us have a look at the context. Renewable Energy Limited, which is a subsidiary of NTPC, the government-owned electric utility company, has signed a memorandum of understanding with Ladakh to set up India's first green hydrogen mobility project in the region. We must understand that the government of India has undertaken several initiatives and projects to increase the renewable energy capacity in the country. And this is being done as the world is facing adverse effects of climate change and global warming. 
For India being world's third largest emitter of greenhouse gases, the clean energy sector is very crucial. For this, India has also set its renewable energy targets. Let us discuss about this as we discuss the answer to this question. Statement 1 is correct because India has set an ambitious target of 175 gigawatts of renewable energy to be installed by 2022. And this 175 gigawatts of renewable energy would be achieved from various different renewable energy sources. That is 100 gigawatts of solar power, 60 gigawatts from wind energy, 10 gigawatts from biopower and the remaining 5 gigawatts from small hydropower. So from here we know that the second statement is also correct. India's renewable energy target for solar power is 100 gigawatts by 2022. Coming to statement number 3. India's largest floating solar power has been commissioned at Vishakapatnam and not Chennai. Since the question is asking us for incorrect statement, the right answer to this question would be option C, 3 only. Question number 4. Which of the given statements is or are correct? Satras are monastic institutions created as a part of the new Vaishnavist reformist movement started by Srimanta Sankaradeva. Statement number 2. Satras propagate the worship through art approach. Why have we taken this question? The Assam Cattle Preservation Bill 2021 has been tabled in the Assam State Assembly and among its provisions is the mention of Satra. Let us go back to the question. The first statement here is correct because Satras are institutional centers associated with the Ekasarana tradition of Vaishnavism. And these were created as a part of the neo-Vaishnavite reformist movement in Assam. It is a unique feature of Vaishnavism in Assam founded by Sankaradeva. These satras were established as centers of religious, social and cultural reforms. Each satra had something called as Namgar, which was a worship hall as its nucleus. And this was headed by Satradikar. These monastic centers propagated Sankaradeva's unique approach of worshipping through art. Therefore, the statement number 2 is also correct. The worshipping through art approach included music, that is Borgit, dance, as well as theatre. So, the right answer to this question would be option C, both 1 and 2. Now, let us take up a previous year question from the year 2019. In the context of which of the following are the terms pyrolysis and plasma gasification mentioned? Option A. Extraction of earth element. Option B. Natural gas extraction technologies. Option C. Hydrogen fuel based automobiles. Option D. Waste to energy technologies. The right answer is option D. Waste to energy technologies. The term pyrolysis involves combustion in the absence of oxygen or the material is burnt under controlled atmosphere of oxygen. The liquid and gas obtained as a product of this process that is pyrolysis can be used as fuels. This is one of those technologies that can be used in converting waste into fuel. On the other hand, plasma gasification is an extreme thermal process using plasma, which is used to convert organic matter into synthetic gas. This is also an emerging technology which can process landfill waste and convert carbon-based materials into fuel. Therefore, the right answer would be waste to energy technologies. Now, let us take up the fact of the day for today that is scheme for development of ultra-mega renewable energy power parks. An article in the PIB today makes a mention of the solar park scheme and also the ultra-mega renewable energy power park scheme. This scheme was launched by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy in the year 2014 under the Solar Park Scheme. The Solar Park Scheme was designed to encourage the construction of solar parks, as the name suggests. This scheme provides the building blocks, land and grid connectivity to the solar parks. Coming to the Ultra Mega Renewable Energy Power Park Scheme. The UMREPP is an attempt to create large power generation capacities at a single location. 
Under the scheme, it was proposed to set up at least 25 solar parks and ultra mega solar power projects targeting over 20,000 megawatts of solar power installed capacity. The target was to achieve this within a span of five years starting from 2014. However, in the year 2017, the capacity under the scheme was enhanced from the 20,000 megawatts to 40,000 megawatts and the parks were proposed to be set up by 2021 and 22. These solar parks will be developed in collaboration with the state governments, but the central government provides financial support for construction of these solar projects. The central financial assistance of up to 20 lakhs per megawatt or 30% of the project cost including grid connectivity cost, whichever is low, is provided by the centre. In one of the questions today, we discussed that India aims at installing 100 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity from solar energy by 2022. And this scheme aims at achieving this target. What are the benefits of this scheme? The UMREPP aims to support states as well as union territories in setting up solar parks so that the infrastructure can be created for setting up of solar power projects. And these solar parks would be helpful in providing suitable developed land with all that is required for a solar power project. For example, these solar power projects will need clearances, they will need transmission systems, water access, road connectivity, communication network and this scheme aims at providing the infrastructure for setting up of solar power projects. Another reason why the scheme was launched is that the scheme speeds up the installation of grid-connected solar power projects so that electricity generation can be achieved on a large scale. So in turn, this will help developers achieve economies of scale and this will result in further bringing down solar power tariffs. This particular scheme plays a major role in reducing India's carbon footprint and promotion of high-end technical investment in solar energy. It is expected that this scheme would boost India's image as a clean energy champion. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.